Today on Historical Recreations, we'll be making 1956 motor colors from cars. And to create the Pinecrest Green, Sherwood Green, Nassau Blue, Harbor Blue, Dusk Plum, Matador Red, Twilight Turquoise, and Crocus Yellow, we're going to be needing these colors here. So I'm going to be showing you today, this is a black 999, and I'll be using a 901 Titanium White. I'm also using a 629 Yellow Green, a 638 Sap Green, a Sky Blue number 932, a Cobalt Blue Hue, which is a 643, a Lilac, which coming in at a 940. Two, a naphthal red light 615 an emerald green uh, 28 now this is an older color you can actually mix this color up but I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit later and this is a permanent yellow 4 now with these acrylic colors you can mix up our beautiful 1956 palette Today I'll be making up a chart of our colors that we'll be making, so I'll be putting them in order as we create them. So let's mix up our first color. Our first color I'm going to demonstrate today is a pine crest green. Now how to create a pine crest green, you're going to be using a bit of white a bit of the yellow green number six this is brand new six twenty nine the beautiful color that is and I'm using a bit of sap green number nine another brand new tube wow you guys are lucky today uh, number six thirty eight I'm gonna show you how to create a pine crest green what I love about this is that if you're into antique cars or if you're trying to do something with cosplay and you kind of mix the right color for one of your projects, this is the way to go. These colors were very popular during the 50s. Uh, every year the motor companies would choose different colors to put on their cars. We're using one part over here of our sap green. Look at this, it's a beautiful color right there. Friends, this right here is a pine crest green. Before I put this away, I wanted to demonstrate one more really cool, cool, cool thing you can do is by adding silver to any of these 19, uh, 56 and 50s colors you will create just the look of certain um, appliances and other materials that were found in and around the home. Check this out. This beautiful color right there. And this would be in the 50s homes. Everything had a silver base to it. Silver Christmas trees, chrome on cars, everything. Look at that. We can add that to our chart. Next very beautiful color from the 1950s it was called Sherwood Green. I'm going to be using today the Sap Green uh, number 638 over here and a dab of black and let's create a nice rich darker color of green today. Sherwood green like the Sherwood forest uh, has a nice pine color to it. Look at this beautiful color. Beautiful. Uh, we can add this now to our chart. But before I do that, remember the trick I had shown you about using silver today. I'm going to watch what this does. Um, if you've ever seen antique bubblegum machines, in old stores you're going to recognize this color immediately look at this uh, if you had created or if you've seen any of my tutorials on creating i actually have one video on how to create antique bubblegum machine on my channel 
check this out. This is a 1950s metallic green color. And I remember seeing bubblegum machines for one cent when I was a kid in supermarkets back in uh, New England. And they would have this color all over it. Okay, so let's add these to our chart. Our next color today we're going to be doing is called Nasilla Blue. I'll make sure I put enough of that out there. I'm going to put a little bit more, which is Sky Blue number 932. And we are going to dilute that today with a bit of titanium white. And Nasilla Blue is a beautiful color. Um, you'd usually find this in interiors of 56 Buicks, 56 um, Chevrolets, um, these are beautiful colors, the interior materials. There it is, beautiful mixture of, this is just such an ocean color, you know, it's such an ocean color. We're bringing in about three parts to one here. And there it is. There it is, a beautiful Nasua blue. We'll be adding that to the chart. Now, as always, we're going to be doing magic today by adding the silver. And let's see what this creates over here. The 1950s. Uh, whenever I looked at old Christmas ornaments and collectibles, antiques in stores, dazzled me. Um, loved it walking through antique stores as a kid and seeing all of these beautiful silver metallic materials, especially the Christmas trees uh, that they had with um, lights and these, I don't know, cellophane glowing things. Look at this beautiful silver blue we created. Let's add these now to our chart. Our next very wonderful color today is Harbor Blue. And I'm using a cobalt blue. Oh, we got a little souvenir there. Oh, you come back. <laughs> Go away. 648. And let's see if we can get some color out here. Yes. Okay. And we're going to be adding a dot of black and a dot of white to this to create this color okay so we're gonna be mixing in today our cobalt blue and we're gonna darken this down with a bit of our black you can see right now it has a cookie monster color to it if you want to make Cookie Monster, now you know how to make Cookie Monster colors. Now once you get that black established in there, let's boost that color up now with the white. Ladies and gentlemen, Harbor Blue. Uh, I used to work for the Sharon Williams company uh, doing paint mixing and mixology. I wouldn't, every time I say mixology, everyone thinks I used to make cocktails but uh, it was we were used to mix colors for the company and uh, man oh man I, I miss the days of using the machines to mix colors that is a harbor blue so let's add this now to our chart oh wait not yet why guess what we're gonna do hey I'm not letting you down this is historical recreations we are adding our silver to create that 1956 awesomeness. <laughs> Check this one out. This one, even more beautiful. Oh man. Chrome finishes. Um, my grandfather had a beautiful 1950s push lawnmower that had a metallic chrome finish like this, but in green. We can now add these to our chart. 
Our next amazingly beautiful color we're going to be mixing up today is called Dusk Plum. And we're going to be starting off today with a lilac number 942. As your center base. Okay. And I'm also going to be using our black. And I'm also going to be touching up with a bit of white. And I'm going to be adding a little tiny touch of the naphtha red light in there. Okay, so our color combination today goes like this. Let's start off use, mixing in with our lilac, bit of our black to bring that down to a nice gray lavender here. We're going to be moving into a bit of our red boost this color. Okay, we're going to need a little bit more of our naphtha red and adding more black to this. It was a very, how you say, a distinct color. It's a very, very dark purple color with a gray tone to it. Whoa. Now we're getting there. There we go. You keep working your colors until they are precisely as a color chart that you have. Or a, yes, we hit it. There it is. That is a dusk plum. So let's add this now to our chart. Oh, and again, what did the professor do? The professor is going to demonstrate beautiful silver finish using the color that's right on my brush. I'm getting a kick out of doing the silver finishes today for you because they are really coming in as historical, very mystique colors here. Look at this, beautiful. 1950s silver everything. Wow. So let's now add these to our charts. Next color, which I'm very excited to demonstrate is Matador Red. Now the naphtha comes in pretty close to the, the color of Matador Red, but it's going to be a little bit of black today and I might just see if it's too dark we're going to be toning that down with the gray most of the colors from the 1950s had a grayish kind of a foggy uh, tone to them so if we're looking now to see how these are going to mix let's look at our matador red matador as in Spain um, the two countries that were very popular in the 1950s was Spain and India. And those names seem to show up in a lot of advertisements. Look at this beautiful, dark, look at that. Now you can actually get this color in uh, a tube of any type of acrylic red, red darks, medium reds. However, 
I love just mixing stuff up. Just on top of white to muddy that up. There you go. <laughs> there it is. I love it. The color of the Spanish bullfight. There it is. A dark, rich, matador red. Now, as promised, guess what we're going to do? You guessed it. I can't wait to show you what these silver charts are going to look like when they're finished. You may get inspired just by the silver charts that we're doing today. Look at this color. Um, back when the Fiesta plates and Fiesta Ware uh, company used to make um, pottery and materials, they experimented with metallic finishes. And although they were not popular, I had seen some finishes that they had experimented with that were one of a kind. Look at this beautiful color. Okay, let's add these to our charts. Today we are working on our Twilight Turquoise. And I'm gonna be using an emerald green number 28 here. I'm also going to be mixing in, oh, I love the sound of my computer, uh, a cobalt blue. All these little crumbs and tidbits that are left over from the paint when you are making something. A bit of black. And a bit of white. I mean, a little bit more than that. A turquoise is a mixture of a green and a blue. However, with the twilight turquoise, it is more richer uh, in a dark tone. So we're going to start off with the cobalt blue as our base. And then we're going to mix our lightest colors into it and bring it up to code here. Wow, we are pretty close on this one. Uh, we're going to need more cobalt with this one. Definitely. Definitely a little bit more cobalt. And then we're going to muddy it up. This is a very nice color. Um, it reminds me of Arizona. When I was a kid, we went out to uh, see the Painted Desert in Arizona. Oh, we took a four, country, uh, four state ride, California, Utah, uh, Nevada, and Arizona. And I remember seeing so many beautiful colors. We're gonna be muddying this up now with our black boosting the color up with our white check this out we have a twilight turquoise but as you know we're not done yet going in for the kill on the silver Now this reminds me of my dad's 56 Buick interior of the car. Sometimes, uh, sometimes with paints, you're going to get lumps and stuff. I have an assortment of tweezers over here. I can just take it out. Um, wow. I love this. Actually, let's put even more silver in there and see what this really can do. one do you like better the light or the medium or the twilight okay now let's add this to our charts and lastly probably the one you've been expecting to see the most is called crocus 
yellow. This is going to be a large amount of white and a very small amount of permanent yellow deep. It's almost 10 to one. And I hope a little bit comes out here. Oh, I got the wrong tube. But this one, I've got truckloads of paint behind me. You can't see it all. Um, when you are doing prop making, the collections just keep building and building and building and building. So this is a nearly 10 to one ratio over here. All of this white and a dot of yellow. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm using the swirling technique right now instead of using the cross hatching. Uh, because the brush is longer in bristles, I usually go like this. But right now I'm just I'm blending it together in a blending form. Um, I'm going to be very honest with you. You might say, wow, that's pretty. I'm going to take that even down a notch to even make it more lighter. Yeah, there it is, right there. That is the color we're looking for. It is an extremely, extremely pale, um, almost egg white yellow. It's a very, 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 very light mixture. Um, you would see this kind of in a froth or a foam or some type of food material. Uh, that from the time period. Now, as you know, I have been indulging you in the silvers today. Guess what we're gonna do? I can tell you what this is gonna look like already. It's gonna be a gray color because there it is. Yeah, I won't go any more than that. Boost it up a little bit more. It has a very aluminum look to it, like a one of those aluminum chairs that they would have, the lawn chairs would have this color to it. All right, and there ends our mixing for our 1950s, 1956 colors. I'm gonna add this to our charts and let's see what the final chart looks like. And boom! This is our color chart that we had created today of the 1950s color. Let's look at them again. We have Pinecrest Green, Sherwood Green, Nassua Blue, Harbor Blue, Dusk Plum, Matador Red, Twilight Turquoise, and Crocus Yellow. But if that doesn't excite you, then this chart will. This is the metallic finishes that we had created using the same color. And I'll give you the rundown again. We have pine crest green metallic, Sherwood green metallic, Nassua blue metallic, Harbor blue metallic, Dusk plum metallic, Matador red metallic, Twilight turquoise metallic, and possibly the most unique color on here as I'm rotating this to show you the shine is the crocus yellow metallic and you can use all of these in your artwork and your cosplay costumes if you like this video like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up professionally and gothically yours professor M